Yeah. So now, in, in this podcast, I'd like to talk about acorns. And acorns is a wide field of uh, knowledge and study because there's so many different species of oak trees. And there's a saying in the acorn community that uh, it goes big and bitter, small and sweet, meaning acorn trees that have really large acorns on them, that the acorns are really, really bitter and have a lot of tannic acid in them. And the oak trees with small acorns, uh, the small acorns have very little tannic acid in them. And some of them you just eat straight from the shelf. And so when you're out in the wilderness, you can search around the different oak trees and have a high likelihood of finding a sweet one that you can just eat the fruits off of. Which is really neat. That's a, a compelling idea. And I certainly do. I, I, I find those kind of trees out in the woods. And, but the thing about acorns is acorns, when processed properly, uh, can be a suitable replacement for wheat flour. And it has a high nutritional value like wheat flour does. So uh, acorns can be a very, very important food source. <clears throat> but the downside to that, the downside to using acorns, is acorns are usually a, a high volume of work kind of item to acquire. Meaning, you know, when the acorns are in season, you have to you have to go and collect the acorns. You have to grade the acorns and remove the bad ones from the good ones. Then you have to shell them. You have to shell the acorns. Then you have to remove the tannic acid from them. And if you're going to make flour from them, you have to dehydrate the acorns and then grind them into a flour. And once you've gone through all those steps of work, you know, that, that turns out to be a lot of work. So it's not something that, you know, just your casual survivalist you know, with an emergency need to feed himself, and that's not something you're really going to do. You know, you're not going to do all that work. You don't have time to do it, for one thing. And even if acorns are perfectly in season right now at the moment that you have a need for them, you can go collect a bunch of them. You know, grade them, collect them, grade them, shell them out, boil them, dehydrate them, grind them into flour. And you're going to be two whole entire days of doing that, if not longer. Yeah, so in an emergency survival situation, the processing of acorns is probably out of the question. So, but if you're living a lifestyle and you're gathering foods as they come in season and you're processing them, you're putting them up and storing them for later on, for later use, um, then working with acorns becomes way more possible. You know? So you have to make it a, a matter of your lifestyle to uh, make acorn flour and use it like that so that um, you can support being able to do it. Because otherwise, otherwise it's just too much work. And you, you can't get the yield fast enough to be a benefit to you. So quite literally, you know, if you plan on using acorns in your wilderness survival practices, make it at home in your leisure time, store it up, and, and you do go out to the woods and you take that camp out, bring your acorn flower with you, and, and use it, you know. And so even if you live in the middle of a big city, you can still kind of live the wilderness lifestyle by, by gathering wild plants, processing them, preserving them, 
and then keeping through the camp outs and taking through the routings in the woods. Yeah. I've done that before. Yeah. That's an effective method of doing it. It gives you casual time to uh, to be able to build up a volume of food to make you know to make it sensible to to eat that stuff. You know, there's so many wild foods out there in the woods that you can just pick and eat just straight away. And you know, a true survival situation. If you're out there for a weekend. And you got to get yourself out of the woods. You know, you're stuck out there overnight. And you need a meal today. You got to have something you can just pick and eat. You know. And so th that's how you're going to survive. You know. In, in that kind of situation, you're not going to gather a bag full of acorns and try to make acorn flour. Because you just really, really don't have the, the time or the available opportunity to invest the effort into doing that. You know, it's just not practical. So once you have the acorns and have the acorn flour, you know, you've gone through the work of doing all the processes to get your acorn flour and you have it ground up. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with it. As I said earlier, you can use it just like flour. So you can make you know, flat, flat breads out of it, stone, things like that, pancakes. Um, you can mix, mix it 50-50 with regular flour. And, extend both materials if you want to do that and that's what a lot of people do that's a common practice you, know, you, you do the same thing with buckwheat flour I happen to like buckwheat flour quite a bit and I always mix it half and half with regular flour and make my bread out of it, make my pancakes make my waffles, whatever I'm making out of it and so I, I use uh, acorn flour the same way. And yeah, it's really, really good. It, it makes a, and if you're making bread out of it, if you're making like a traditional loaf bread with acorn flour and regular flour mix, it comes out to be a really dark colored bread, like uh, like pumpernickel bread is, you know? Kind of like a dark brownish, reddish brown color, a chocolate brown color. So it makes a really, really dark, dense, kind of flavorful bread that is just so, so good. And I guarantee it's worth the effort to, to work with the acorns because the, the bread that it makes is absolutely fantastic. But it's not something you do quickly. I mean, you, 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 it's a, you have to make it a matter of your lifestyle, and not a matter of your emergency, to be able to have the you know, acorn flour effectively and use it the way it should be used. But I really enjoy cooking with it. And you can use it as a thickener in, in foods. And when, when it's dehydrated, you can Put it into a, a stew, and it'll it'll absorb a lot of the liquid in the stew and make it thicker. You know, it'll add a nice, you know, kind of a, you know, green aspect to the to the dish, whatever it is. It's always really nice. You know, like you put put barley, you know, in some dishes. So, you know. Acorn it can be quite nice the same way in a, in a stew, like a caribou stew, put an acorn in it, it makes it very good. That makes it very good. So acorns, when they're 
fully prepared and I can boil and all the tannins removed and dry them out to take on a light brown to a chocolate brown kind of color to them, sort of like coffee coffee beans, like roasted coffee beans is what they look like. Yeah, so it takes on the same coloration as roasted coffee beans. And so it kind of adds that color to anything that you use it in. You know, if you make bread, it makes the bread dark brown. Cook it into a stew, it gives the stew a you know, dark color throughout. And they have a kind of like a chocolate, chocolatey brown or a reddish brown coffee bean kind of color to them. And they really don't have a dominant flavor of their own. They're almost kind of bland. And they'll they'll take on the flavor of other foods. So you can add it indescribably to almost anything and not alter the flavor of what you're adding it to. So that makes acorns a convenient food to use also. You know, it's, it's a hard thing to add a really strongly flavored something to a dish that you know, it is a conflicting flavor and then have to eat it. You know, that, that's really difficult to do. And if you have to do that, then you're placing stress on your survival situation. And so these make ones, um, they have a bland flavor that doesn't really alter the flavor of anything you add it to. So you can use it in almost anything to stretch it. You know, stretch. <clears throat> that makes it a really convenient thing to use and have. Now, at one time, the acorns were, you know, a critically important food. It was, you know, as necessary as rice. But acorns have fallen out of use, and I don't know why, because it's such a, it's such a valuable, and it's such a good food, and such a, such a wholesome food. I can't understand why we're not still eating it. That's kind of baffling to me. But it's the same with sumac. You know, sumac is popular among us, you know, survival enthusiasts. You know, the, the, the mainstream public doesn't demand using it, you know. So, sumac has largely fallen out of use because of that. And, wow, what a, what a wonderful food that is, a wonderful drink it is. Yeah, so. You just can't say enough about acorns. Acorns are, are still a valuable food today. Um, <clears throat> they're not not good to use in an emergency survival situation, as I said, because of the processing time. But if you're doing it casually, just throughout the year, as they come in season, you gather them, do the processing, um, you save it, store it up, and save it for your survival campouts, and then you, you can use it then. And then that gives you a chance to be able to, to get acorn flour and, and to be able to use it under the most optimal conditions, you know. And so that can be really good. So it, it allows you to practice, practice that survival skill and, you know, having that, having that as a part of your survival diet and allows you to do that without being in the real emergency of having to produce that food in a, you know, in a time frame that it can't be done in, you know. You can understand what I mean. Thank you, folks. This is Cracker Jack, and thank you for listening to today's podcast.